deep shots from three in the finals. Big stacks in the bank. Here's Jamal Murray's crazy lifestyle. Born in Kitchener, Ontario in February 1997, we all know Jamal Murray is one of the best Canadians in the NBA, but he might also be the best Jamaican or even Syrian in the league. That's right, because his mother Sylvia is from Syria and his dad, Roger Murray, was born in Jamaica and lived there until he was nine. Dude technically has three nationalities. Must be cool, bro. Anyways, Jamal got most of his athletics from his dad, who grew up running track and field and playing basketball. In fact, back in Roger Murray's day, he used to play ball against fellow Kitchener native Lennox Lewis. And for any boxing fans, yup, the same Lennox Lewis who's a three-time world heavyweight champion and the last heavyweight to hold the undisputed championship. He used to ball with Jamal's dad before going into pro boxing. He also coached youth basketball and had Jamal playing basketball by the time he was three years old. A common theme amongst these NBA hoopers. And he wasn't just trying to bounce the ball like the toddlers, nah. The kid was spending hours on the court at the age of three. And it gets even better. By the time he was six years old, he was playing against 10 year old kids and completely embarrassing them. Jamal was different from the beginning, cooking up on fifth graders as a six year old. Fast forward to another six years and Jamal was playing a pickup game against top high school and college players. Oh yeah, he was that good. My man hadn't even graduated middle school and he was hooping against some of the best players in the league. Almost kind of reminds me of a young Austin Rivers. So big shout outs to his pops for putting him in position on that court because he had Jamal running basketball drills, doing kung fu exercises exercises, and even practicing meditation as a child. Talk about well-rounded. I don't know what you think, but this looks like some Project LeBron type stuff to me. Anyways, Murray grew up in Kitchener with his parents and younger brother Lamar. He first went to Grand River Collegiate Institute in Kitchener before transferring to Orangeville Prep in Orangeville, Ontario. With his father as an assistant coach in Orangeville, Lamar and a fellow prospect who now plays in the CBA, the Chinese Basketball Association, created a sort of dynasty. They defeated nearly every American school they played against. And of course, Murray was always the MVP, be it at the Jordan Brand Classic, International Game, or the BioSteel All-Canadian Basketball Game. This dude was unstoppable. He brought back all the hardware he could, and he eventually reclassified to the class of 2015 ahead of his original college year and committed to Kentucky to play for coach John Calipari. Everyone knows John Calipari for being one of the best coaches in college basketball for railroading one and dones straight to the NBA. He has all the connections with the major agents and yada yada yada. Jamal needed just one year of college ball to be ready for the NBA, having averaged a crazy 20 points, 5.2 rebounds, and 2.2 assists while shooting 40.8% from the three-point range in his one year with Kentucky. Pretty impressive, right? And this dude was out there hooping with something to prove, because if anyone remembers, that team Jamal Murray was on on the Wildcats featured seven future NBA players, including Bam Adebayo, Malik Young, and Hamadou Diallo. Oh, and I can't forget my man De'Aaron Fox. I always forgot about him. So Jamal Jamal entered the 2016 NBA draft, got selected by the Denver Nuggets as the seventh overall pick, and has been balling out ever since. Not gonna lie, despite Jamal Murray's otherworldly performance in the 2020 bubble and his amazing play in the playoffs so far this season, the only accolade he's really gotten so far is an NBA all-rookie second team selection. Mostly all the attention goes towards Jokic, but he and Jokic just led the Nuggets to the 2023 NBA Finals. And currently, as of the recording of this video, there are only two weeks wins away from bringing home the first championship to Denver. Plus, he's only 26 years old and he recovered from an ACL injury and in some ways his games look even better. When it comes to accolades and all NBA teams, Jamal might not be there just yet with the media, but he definitely is when it comes to secure that bag. Net worth. So everyone knows Nikola Jokic is one of the highest contracts in the NBA and so he's the number one paid player on the Denver Nuggets. But Jamal Murray isn't just the second highest player in the franchise. He's among the highest paid in the entire league. In July 2019, the Nuggets guard signed a five-year maximum rookie scale extension contract worth $170 million. Well, dang. This deal comes with 31,600,000 average salary. And by the 2023-2024 season, Jamal will be earning a base pay salary of $33 million. And I bet there will be perks for making it to the finals and big bonuses for winning, if the Nuggets can pull it off over the next few games, TBD. That deal is still the biggest NBA contract for any Canadian born player in the game's history. I guess all that Kung Fu and meditation definitely paid off because this guy has a staggering net worth of $25 million. That's like making a million dollars every year of his life. And with the contract he's on, that number is sure to skyrocket in future years. But sinking three pointers isn't the only way Jamal Murray makes his money. Endorsements. 
Now, Jamal, like many NBA stars, makes millions just from the brands he endorses without even picking up a ball. He spent the early years of his career repping Adidas with the shoes. But in late 2020, he signed a lucrative contract with New Balance. Because of this deal, he rocks every latest New Balance shoe. But please don't expect us to know the model names. All New Balances are dad's about to mess it up at the cookout for me. Other than this shoe deal though, Murray is signed to other mega companies like Beats by Dre, Ruffles Chips, Western Union, Lyft, and Express. That's not enough dough for Jamal. No, no, no. He takes his earnings and invests so his money goes up while he sleeps. The biggest highlight of Jamal's investment portfolio are his real estate investments, under which he owns multiple commercial and residential properties in the US and in Canada. He's also a partner in a financial institution based in his hometown of Kitchener, of course, called ATB Financial. And the Canadian retail company, Canadian Tire. Dude doesn't mess around with his bread. And the next part of his wealthy lifestyle is proof of that, cars. Now, many pro athletes like to blow their money on fast cars, but not this guy. I know, I know, Jamal Murray lifestyle, the stereotypical gotta have the fast whip NBA player, right? Nah, man. In 2020, Murray revealed during a podcast with former NBA players Quentin Richardson and Darius Miles that he doesn't even own a car. And that was his fifth year in the league. He'd signed a $107 million contract and was driving rentals around. He had two scooters to his name. That's it. I just looked the same way growing up, man. I'm different like that. I don't see money like that. Money's just paper. That's an actual quote from Jamal Murray. That's just crazy for real. If I had a nine-figure contract, man, I'd be buying whips left and right. But more recently, though, there have been reports that Jamal now owns two badass rides. I guess he had a change of heart. The first is a full-size luxury SUV Cadillac Escalade worth about $80,000 and goes 0 to 60 in about 6.1 seconds. This car is decked out with all luxury amenities, and that's one hell of a vehicle. And the same can be said for Jamal's second car, a Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT, worth just over $72,000. Stacks. This car is a high performance SUV with a 6.4 liter V8 engine and pumps out 475 horsepower. Pretty decent rides, don't you think? But come on, if he was a $25 million net worth and he's only spent $150,000 on cars, that leaves $15 million left over. What else did he spend it on? Houses. While it's possible that Murray might own a larger home or mansion in his native Canada, and he also has those commercial real estate projects we talked about earlier, Jamal keeps a relatively modest crib in Denver during the season. In July 2019, an LLC connected with Murray spent $870,000 on a townhouse in the city's Jefferson Park neighborhood. The four-level residence was built in 2014 and offers a rooftop terrace with spectacular city and mountain views. The three-bedroom home features a cute kitchen with bar seating, a couple of cozy living spaces, and a petite dining room. Best of all, it's only about a mile from Ball Arena, so it won't take him long to get to the games. Pretty cool crib, I can't lie and on top of his other real estate holdings, he has a nice little portfolio. But what else does this man spend his bread on, man? He's still got a lot more millions to go. Charity. You heard it here first. Jamal Murray is one of the most charitable players in the NBA. He runs a foundation called the Jamal Murray Foundation. The foundation aims to provide resources and support for underprivileged children and youth in Canada and the US. The Jamal Murray Foundation does this by organizing mentorship campaigns and basketball camps. But Jamal doesn't stop there. In 2020, during the pandemic, Murray single-handedly donated 200 bands to support COVID-19 relief efforts in his hometown of Kitchener, Ontario. Later that year, he dropped 200 meals to healthcare workers at UC Health to show appreciation for the workers there. And that's not all. Jamal Murray also provides backpacks and school supplies for kids in the Kitchener-Waterloo area. He's also funded a basketball court at the Waterloo Region Housing Complex on Amos Avenue in Canada, and has since made frequent donations towards the organization. So my guy is hell of a baller, super rich, and definitely a good looking pause. Is there any lucky lady in this man's life? I don't know, man, this guy does look like a velociraptor. My man looked like a T-Rex off the land before time. Is there any lucky lady other than the one on IG. Oh, we ain't gonna go there. This is a family-friendly channel. There was a lucky lady, and yes, it's that lucky lady, Harper Hempel. Born just months after Jamal was in Kentucky, Harper was raised in Kentucky in a super athletic family. Her dad, Rich Hempel, co-founded a company that offers discounted coach training to NBA coaches. Harper attended the University of Kentucky and has a degree in advertising and digital media. She was also a star athlete for her high school days and played volleyball for Kentucky's women's team. She works as a social media marketing executive executive and brand manager. Harper's also sort of a social media influencer and has a massive following of over 66,000 followers. Damn, man, I wonder how she reeled in so many. Probably her awesome content and skills using digital media marketing. 
Harper and Jamal met while they were both students at the University of Kentucky. They began dating in college and stayed together long distance despite Jamal moving to Denver after getting drafted. That's actually pretty cute, man. The two have been pictured together multiple times, and they're always having people say their couple goals. However, it's been a while since Harper and Jamal have been seen or f photographed spending time together recently. Rumors of their breakup have been circulated, but neither have given confirmation. Personally, I think players at this level should just have to focus on the game sometimes. It's not personal. Their wives and girlfriends should just understand that. Damn.